I am joined by Trevor Alcorn from the incredible Tridentine Brewing. We're going to be talking about uh, all things alcohol related. Uh, his incredible brewery, a little bit about beer, uh, a lot about beer, actually. Uh, alcohol from the Bible, why alcohol is perfectly fine and in a responsible way. Uh, Trevor Alcorn, um, I want to thank you for joining me today on the show. And uh, just to ask you, before we dive into anything, uh, how are you doing today, brother? I did fantastic, William. Thank you again for, for having me on the, on the show. Great Friday. Oh, wonderful Friday. It'll become even more wonderful in a moment when I pop this open. Incredible looking beer there. Indeed, every beer that you've got um, at your brewery just really does look magnificent. Um, that does bring me to to my first question for you. I'd like to, to really uh, pick your brain. Um, tell us a little bit about your brewery. You know, what inspired you to brew beer? And because you don't run into a Catholic brewery very often. It's that in not in the US at least. And the ones in Germany, because I go to Germany very often, I go to Europe very often. The Catholic ones are not really so Catholic anymore, unfortunately. Only in um history of monks having brewed the beer. They're they're not really very Catholic anymore. So what tell us a little bit about your history. Yeah, sure, of course. So uh it goes back uh, at least in family family history because this is a family a fam, family home brewing operation and I go way back to the uh, the 1920s for my uh, great grandmother who used to brew beer in her bathtub during yeah. prohibition in, in Chicago uh, I'm not sure I'd love that beer so much mm. out of the bathtub but you know <laughs> I think uh, make, make do with with what you've got uh, but so that was kind of the really deep roots I should say of the uh, Tridentine brewing. But then uh, my grandfather, uh, he actually started brewing in the, um, so zipping ahead to the 1980s. He was brewing in the 1980s and 1990s. Uh, and my father uh, would brew with him. My father, Jeff Elkhorn, who's our brewmaster. Right. Uh, and so they, they would get together and brew. And yeah, when my uh, grandfather passed away in the late 90s, there was a bit of a gap between then and actually about 2013. So I was a little bit too young to brew in the, in the nineties. <laughs> I was still a kid. Uh, but when my parents were, were moving out of, out of their house, actually in 2013, we found all these, all the brewing supplies, uh, wow. that my grandfather and father had used. And I asked my dad, I said, Hey, you know, why don't you, why don't you go ahead and teach me? And, you know, maybe we could do this as a fun, fun side hobby. So that was really the start. And it was just, you know, it was gradual. Uh, we used a very uh, simplistic uh, style of home brewing called extract brewing. It's really mm -hmm. the entry level way to get into home brewing. We did that for about five years, actually, until 2018. We decided to then, uh, once my father was going to be uh, retiring, uh, we decided let's maybe go ahead and take this to the next level, get more into this. Uh, Next level will be what's called all grain brewing. So you're really yep. starting from scratch with the grains. Um, and so we did that. We built out a home brewery in my basement, uh, which is which is a lot of fun. It was like 20, 2019 uh, <laughs> project. It was right in time for, for 2020 for all the craziness. We had a brewery oh, yeah. already built out, uh, which was which was fantastic. Um, but really up until 2019, we didn't name it anything. It wasn't named Tridentine or anything else. Uh, but when we when we really decided to, let's take this to the next level. Let's go to all grain brewing. Uh, maybe let's brand it. My brother is a really talented graphic designer. So he he creates all of our labels. He created mm. our logo. So he's decided, what do we want to really do with this? Yeah, everything, right everything incredible. Yeah, I've got, I have to hand it to him. Um, every image that I have seen. In fact, let me put this briefly as the background, uh, your logo as well. Everything is he, incredibly talented. I have to really hand it to him. Yeah, my, my brother Cameron is incredibly talented. Uh, and obviously that's, um, you know, hats off to him because that's a whole draw that people have to the brewery. It's obviously the the aesthetics, the, the beauty of it. Uh, and that's something a lot of breweries don't don't really have uh, in this day and age. So uh, he does a fantastic job for us. But we decided, well, what do we want to really do this brewery around? You know, what's the theme? Because most breweries have a name, a theme. Yeah. And uh, we went through about 30 different iterations of names, batted some ideas around. And then we ended up with uh, Tridentine or Tridentine. There's a lot of different ways to say it. Yeah. Uh, brewing. And you might ask why, uh, why Tridentine? And that's just because, uh, well, my father, well, 
our whole family is uh, really attracted to the traditional Latin mass. And actually wow. that was something that really uh, drew my father, who's a convert from Protestantism, I wow. uh, drew my father into the faith because uh, he read a lot of the church, the church fathers. And at mm -hmm. first he wasn't really, um, you know, all the time seeing that uh, in the, uh, the Novus Ordo mass, like some of the things that he was reading. And then he went to St. John Cantus and other things in, in other masses in Chicago. And he really saw, uh, a lot of what he was reading in, in the fathers and whatnot. Right. So, yeah. So instantaneously, he was drawn to that, and so we've had a great devotion to um, the TLM. And so we decided to name the name the brewery uh, Tridentine after, of course, the uh, the Council of Trent and the uh, the yep. I guess canonization or not canonization, but the codification of the of that particular mass. So, uh, that's so yeah, that's the uh, genesis of the uh, genesis of the name. And so, yeah, our our whole uh, goal, or I guess the theme of the brewery is brewing beer for the greater glory of, of God. Mm. Um, and so we, we really, I mean, there's some patriotic themes that we do as well within our, uh, some of our beers, but really it's to give, give honor to God, uh, to the saints. And so that's really the main uh, driving theme of the brewery and on, on the beers that we brew. Yeah, no doubt. And, and uh, on that very theme of, um, of a uh, patriotic, uh, we uh, will pray that um, Roe v. Wade does get overturned. We've been waiting for that to happen. So uh, God willing, that does happen. I know that right now, um, a lot of good things happening in Texas. Got to keep praying uh, all around all around the U.S. But uh, yeah, I think your patriotic themed uh, uh, beers and everything is fantastic as well. I mean, we should love our country and want our country to represent great moral values that point people towards God. So I think that it goes very, very well with um with your theme. Let me let me, let me ask you something that maybe has not been asked you before. Sure. Was was there a name that maybe you all said, you know what, we're gonna go with this, and then you tilted towards Trinity Brewing? Was there any other name that you all wanted beforehand? Oh yeah. Well there there were definitely some uh there were definitely some more secular names that were, mm. that were thrown around. Um, yeah. So my dad had a really crazy, <laughs> I'll give you the really crazy name that came up and we, we shot it down. It was called Barking Weasel. I don't really, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you'll hear a lot of off the wall brewery names. Yeah. And I, you know, we, we had some conversations about it. We're like, you know what? I think this is a really good opportunity to really, uh, you know, showcase the faith that some, something that not a lot of people are doing in brewing space, at least. Yeah. You know, something that's more patriotic and for our faith. Yep. And so that's why we went more in the direction of the, of the Catholic theme, because it was a great opportunity to do that. Uh, so, yeah, I think we, we also had some other, I'd have to look up the list again. We, we had some more uh, Catholic specific names, but ultimately decided to go with, with Tridentine. A wonderful name. Uh, wonderful. And uh, definitely, um, uh, be praying for for the blessing upon your brewery for your brewery to last a very very long time. Uh, one of the things that I love talking about, but by the way, uh, something that the audience might not have any idea about, uh, I've talked about it very rarely before. I've done shows on alcohol in the Bible, early church history. Uh, I've written a very short book on the alcohol on alcohol in the Catholic faith. So I have a great appreciation for it. So this is a very special show for me. And your brewery is a brewery that I pray becomes incredibly successful. Um, if you look at the Bible, catechism, and I even, uh, yeah, you're going to probably think I'm crazy. I even hunted down uh, church councils that talked about alcohol when working on my book. Uh, it's very clear. Um, alcohol in moderation is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I would like to ask you, though, I know your, your, your um, of course, your ultimate goal is to bring glory to God, to bring uh, attention to the beautiful uh, traditional Latin Mass, beautiful Mass, uh, and indeed, we would pray that every single Mass around the world would be beautiful, and we would pray that uh, liturgical abuses vanish in a perfect world, <laughs> it would, but um, do you have any particular kind of goal, like you say, okay, well, our goal is to... Uh, grow way bigger or, you know, to have many more flagship beers. Is there a particular vision you might have? And while you talk about that, I'm going to pop open this incredible uh, beer here where you have, um, it is a called Life is Worth Living. And as you know, the wonderful Bishop Fulton Sheen, who um, will be without a doubt sainted very soon. I know that officially will be given the title. Um, so yeah, go, go ahead. Do you have any, any particular kind of vision? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, uh, I'd like to say that, well, let me interrupt right now, you briefly. Interrupt. It, it does smell wonderful. 
Oh, thank it you. It really <laughs> does smell wonderful. <laughs> well, good. You know, if someone who's written a book on on alcohol usage uh, in the, <laughs> the church, uh, in scripture, and who goes to Europe quite often into Germany and enjoys those fine beers, that's, that's a wonderful compliment, William. So thank you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So in regards to the brewery, well, first of all, right now, at least, we cannot sell the beer. Uh, mm-hmm. So we don't have a commercial license yet. I mean, it's something we're, we're discussing and, and looking into. Um, so that it often comes up. The question is, like, what, what's the end game for you guys? Like, what, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Um, so, I mean, first of all, a few things. Well, first of all, we are, we're already brewing together as a family hobby. And so we yeah. thought, as we should with everything in life, give greater glory to God. So why not with this endeavor as well? Um, and it was a great opportunity to get my brother Cameron involved with the z- design and through that artwork as well, you know, give that greater glory to God and inspire, you know, inspire others as well, or bring more devotion to certain saints or hopefully soon to be saints like the venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen. Uh, so that, so that's something that we like to do or for different uh, initiatives. Uh, you know, we like to, point a spotlight to certain things. So that's part of it. Uh, but I would say another aspect of this is really, uh, I guess, showing more the the art of the possible for what's out there for others that want to do something similar. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a brewery. Although I will say, uh, I, I doubt that even if we, let's just say we got a commercial license and we grew, uh, this is I doubt that we'd ever become uh, you know, a huge national brand or anything like that. So even if someone's listening and they're like, this is awesome, I brew, I'd love to have my own Catholic brewery. I mean, more power to you, get in contact with me. You know, if you need any help or anything, let me know uh, because I'd encourage others to do something similar. Uh, I don't see it as competition. So, but really, really just to encourage others to, you know, is there a way that you incorporate your faith into, you know, what you're doing, whether it's your hobby, it's your business or whatever. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have, uh, you know, take, take the same tack that we have. I mean, ours is very upfront and in your face, you yeah. know, religious, and that's totally fine. I mean, there's nothing against that. But I mean, even in other aspects, you know, whether it's, um, you know, something that you're doing as a, as a hobby, is there a way that you can incorporate, uh, something related to the saints or our Lord or whatever. Uh, so that's that's another aspect of this uh, because obviously in our secular age that we're living in, there's definitely a huge push against God and everything related yeah. to the church. So is there a way that we can bring that more to the fore and uh, really bring the faith to others in what we're doing? So I think that to me, that's a huge aspect of this. It's not just so much of, you know, hey, I'm going to do this so we could have a business, but really yeah. it's that vision of what we can do to spread, uh, you know, spread the faith in this world that we live in, which unfortunately has been very de-Christianized. It, it truly, really has, and, and that really is unfortunate. By the way, even the uh, even the uh, bottle cap is is incredible. Uh, and I want to note, um, uh, I poured the beer what about a minute ago. I don't know how long, and there has still remained a incredibly gorgeous looking head there. And and uh, by the way, for people that may not know, uh, I am part of a, a brotherhood of uh, people that uh, consider themselves eh, beer snobs in Germany in Munich. I love beer, so I can tell you right now, this looks, smells like a quality beer. In a moment, I will take a sip of it. Every indication gives me that uh, this does look incredible. <laughs> it looks gorgeous, I have to say. Uh, every Your presentation and the beer, the bottles, everything is incredible. I'm, I have to be very clear, I'm really blown away. Um, when I look at a scripture, now I want to be clear, we, we can, the very first public miracle of our Lord was alcohol. Uh, it was alcohol. But the Old Testament, uh, people may not realize, uh, there the Old Testament talks about wine, but there are some translations that even translate strong drink as beer because multiple scholars believe it to have been the pretty much the exact same thing that we call beer. You'll find it in Isaiah 24, 9, where it says, no longer do they drink wine with a song. The beer is bitter to its drinkers. Isaiah 56, where it says, let us drink our fill of beer. So beer in moderation is, is incredible. There's nothing wrong with it. It is wonderful. Uh, I looked in your website, and indeed, uh, the, the incredible beers that you sent me, they look wonderful. They look beautiful. But I want to ask you, what beers 
really do you love the most from your brewery? Are there any that you say, you know what, the, this is my particular or these are my favorite? Do you have any of those or do you just like them all? Yeah. So I would say uh, my my father, Jeff, our brewmaster and myself, we, we really have a great love of stouts and mm. porters. So that's really the direction or... Obviously, not everyone loves really dark beer, but certainly that's our our favorite. Yeah. And so, uh, our favorite beer that we've got is called Dies Irae. It's mm. a an, an imperial stout, uh, and so that's our our favorite. Really commemorates um, all All Souls Day and reminding us to pray for the poor souls in purgatory. Oh, yeah. uh, and so that's kind of the theme of that particular beer: a very very dark and very rich. Uh, chocolatey coffee uh, flavor to it, and so that's our favorite. I also personally have another another favorite that we make, uh, which is called Jersey sixteen eighty three, and I know I'm mm. butchering the Polish pronunciation <laughs> of that, uh, but it centers around the Battle of Vienna, which was in sixteen eighty three, uh, when the Turks were about to overrun uh, the city of Vienna, and the, uh, the Polish king and his forces came down and liberated the city. Uh, in many respects, saving Christendom and the Holy Roman Empire uh, is actually that was actually the inspiration for J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, I believe it. Wow, uh, the battle scene at like Helm's Deep, for example, uh, coming to save uh, the uh, wow <laughs> the embattled forces there. So uh, there's a lot a lot of pedigree there. But Jersey was a, a soldier that had uh, snuck out to tell the Polish king uh, uh, John Sobieski to bring his forces and they arrived just in time. And so the uh, Turks left all of their coffee behind. And so Vienna became a very famous city for coffee because they didn't know yeah. what to do with it. And right. they uh, set up coffee houses afterwards. So it's a coffee Kolsch. Uh, and I know I'm, I'm I know I'm mispronouncing Kolsch. I know that's not exactly <laughs> right, but uh, it's a coffee Kolsch. And it just sounds weird when you say, oh, there's coffee added in there, but it's, we put the beans in uh, secondary fermentation, coffee wow. beans into the beer and it's almost like a cold brew effect and it imparts the uh, coffee flavor and i i really love it it's a lighter lighter brew uh, but it still has a really good coffee taste to it so that's my second favorite beer but i would say dscra is is number one well let me let me tell you that if if those beers are um special to you and you haven't even mentioned this one um this is a very i just had a, a multiple sips incredible Really, really good. Incredible mouthfeel mouth as well. Um, and it is 5.5, 5.8, right? Yes. 5.8. 5. Incredible. Wow. Really, really good beer there. Um, because I'm enthralled by this incredible beer by, without a doubt, he will be made a saint soon. Uh, in fact, I recommend anybody, after you're done watching the show, go watch any of his sermons. Go watch his preaching. What a magnificent holy man. Um, you know, his preaching on our Holy Mother Mary, beautiful. I mean, I remember when I, be, I had a convert from Protestantism. I remember when I converted and I would hear Archbishop Sheen, I was so captivated by his incredible love for our beautiful Catholic faith and his incredible knowledge. Um, let me ask you, what inspired this incredible beer? You got to tell me that. One of you all, or hopefully all of you all, love the great venerable Sheen. Oh, we, we, our family has a tremendous love of, of Fulton Sheen. Uh, for many years, we'd watch his Life is Worth Living series or his uh, tapes on cassette even <laughs> where he had a series that, that he recorded. Uh, so we were enormous uh, Fulton Sheen fans. So, for example, uh, my eldest son is named Fulton. Uh, that gives you an indication wow. of the uh, devotion to, to Fulton Sheen. Uh and then Fulton Sheen is a native of Illinois. So our brewery is in, in Northern Illinois. Uh, I went to a university. Now, unfortunately, it's a Protestant university, but it used to be called St. Viator's College. And that's actually where Fulton Sheen went to the university. So I was on the same campus, <laughs> went to the same buildings that Fulton Sheen did uh, for my undergraduate uh, studies. And uh, he, he grew up actually only about an hour and a half away uh, in El Paso, Illinois. And wow. so uh, he, he came, comes from Irish ancestry, of course. And so that had a really great tie in with the uh, Irish stout, or sorry, not Irish stout, our Irish red ale. Red and, ale. Uh, my, my wife loves a good Irish red ale. So we thought, okay, we have to make an Irish red ale. Who better to do it for than you know, the Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen? And so that's, that's where that beer came from. 
very very fitting as well uh, uh, making it an irish red ale that's that was incredibly very very uh smart very crafty now let me ask you this um any plans in the future to perhaps uh make either a bach or a doppelbach um yes so wow. i think that that that's on the uh on the docket yeah. so we have uh typically how the process goes is uh, we've got a, a list. So I actually even have a, a running list of multiple different beer styles and, mm. and names. So usually it's a bit of an organic process that we go through with, okay, what, what beer is next? Sometimes it's dictated a little bit by this, by the season because yeah. typically beers, uh, almost like the liturgical calendar go in a certain, a certain way. You'll have a certain beer for a certain season. Um, and so sometimes that dictates it, but also, you know, we want to honor certain, certain saints. Uh, so, uh, a Bach, double Bach, uh, it's on the list. We just haven't got to it yet. So yeah. we will get there, but, um, I don't have an ETA on it, on it yet. Uh, but who knows, you know, maybe this year we'll get to, uh, get to putting out either one of those. You've got to definitely think about me when you do that because Bach, Doppelbach or Bach, that is my favorite style. And by the way, for people, for people in Texas, um, look, I I know my fellow Texans are going to probably want to throw a tomato at me, but uh, get the, the 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 flavor of a Shiner Bach. Get that out of your head when thinking of a true Bach or a true Doppelbach. That um, you're not going to taste something even relatively similar to that when you have a real Bach when you head either to Europe or you. In anywhere in the U.S. where you get a real box. So you know that very well because I can tell by tasting this incredible beer, you all know how to really <laughs> brew your beer. Um, let me ask you this. I don't think I've asked you. Are you a brewmaster as well? Uh, so I would call myself a brewer because uh, okay. I think within a brewery, there can only be, I could be wrong on this, but one brewmaster. And so right. my, my father is more of the, uh, the brains behind the operation in regards to yep putting all the recipes together um, and really driving it. I mean, I, I help too. I mean, I've, I've brewed batches by myself as well. Uh, but it, in this particular brew, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, call myself a brewmaster. Mm. I would say that it seems like within our family, we all serve a bit of a different function in relation to the brewery. So my dad's kind of the driving force behind the brewing itself and making the recipes. And my brother does all the design work for everything. And I'm kind of this glue piece in between where I'm doing a whole bunch of different things or coming on, on shows like this to talk about the brewery uh, with you, William. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of my my contribution as well as, as helping out with a brewery. Uh, but yeah, my father, he's the one who does a ton of research into each of these recipes. Yeah. So he creates them from scratch. Usually he puts together uh, a batch record, if you will. You know, it's like 10 to 15 pages of, wow. you know, this, these are all the steps. You know, this is the time that we need to, you know, have a, a mash in or a mash out or a boil or, you know, whatever, all the different aspects of the recipe, he puts it all together. So yeah, we would not be what we are without my father. That's for sure. And I, I have to emphasize for the audience who, by the way, when you're tuning in, you're going to be tuning in uh, this evening. We're filming this in the afternoon. I have to, to let the audience know um, this is very different from buying a brewing kit. You all are brewing from scratch. Um, not the same as going to the store and buying that uh, $20 brewing kit and making your, your own beer and bottling those plastic bottles. Very, very different. It does require a lot of meticulous work. And I have to tell you, um, well, actually, let me ask you, what was the very first beer that you'll ever brew? Do, do you recall that by any chance? I know you talked about your, your grandmother, but uh, when you all, I guess, uh, began again, was there a first kind of beer that, you're, um, that you all put out? Yes. Um, so if I can recall correctly, I think that we did a Belgian wit beer. I oh, think wow. was maybe the first beer that we did back in 2013. That's so, a great style. Yeah, it is. Yep. Exactly. So yeah, we, we've done it uh, more, more recently as well. Um, for uh, uh, We actually crafted our own recipe. So we did that one with wow. an extra kit, but we crafted our own recipe for uh, in supporting or promoting the uh, Mass of the Ages documentary that recently came out about the traditional Latin Mass. And so we did one in conjunction with the film crew uh, for that. So yeah, that's our 
you know, I guess going full circle, kind of connecting it back. It wasn't called Mass of the Ages the first time. I, I don't even remember. I think we just called it Belgian Wit Beer the first time. And I have uh, I have that in my fridge right now. I have that. When we do our other show, I am definitely going to pop that one open. I am very excited to do that. Um, I have got to watch that documentary. I have not watched it yet. I've got to watch it. Uh, but I, if you recommend it, I imagine it is pretty good. Have you watched it already? Yes, and uh, watch part one and part two. They just released part two okay. a few weeks ago on Ascension Thursday. And actually, yeah, we met up with the the film crew. They came to Chicago, said different wow. screenings around the country. So we, we wow. brought them some of the beer that we've been collaborating on <laughs> at the premiere in Chicago in, in early May. Uh, but yeah, the online version that's available on YouTube for free uh, premiered on Ascension Thursday. So you can watch it at latinmass.org for any of the audience that's uh, interested in checking that out. And uh, the incredible devotion you have to the traditional Latin mass, I have to say that uh, whenever people ever uh, pick my brain and they ask me, well, um, what really was the driving force to you becoming Catholic? And really the mass was everything. Uh, you know, you can go to um, any Protestant service where they have fancy preaching, what have you, you may think that their preaching is fantastic. If you don't have that valid priesthood, if you don't have that, because look, I, I know there's some churches, they'll give you uh, uh, grape juice and crackers, but then there are some others, Anglican and what have you, where they are much more solemn, but you're not getting our Lord, the body and blood of our Lord, because you don't have a valid priesthood. The mass is everything, which is why I emphasize everybody get to mass and your incredible, really your message uh, of your brewery is really one pointing towards ultimately to our Lord. And I, I think that is a message that today, actually, I don't think, I know that is a message that has been not only muddled, but really totally just lost. And I think uh, ultimately, it seems to me like your goal is to drive people back to the beauty of the faith that perhaps maybe, um, and I don't want to, do, I, I'm definitely not by any means trashing uh, every Novus Ordo, uh, although I've been to some where they have been quite um, a little bit outlandish, some of the abuses, but I've been to some incredibly solemn and beautiful ones in um, Texas, over in Mexico as well. Um, I think your goal really is to really bring people to the beauty that they may have lost or that they maybe have never known. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct, William. And yeah, the goal of the brewery is not to uh, trash the Novus Ordo or yeah. anything like that. I mean, obviously, you know, it's it's a valid mass. Our, our Lord is there present. Mm -hmm. um, so I have nothing nothing bad to say there. I just think that certainly um there's definitely more uh, at least at least i find for myself and for our family definitely a more uh enriching uh presentation of the mass and the traditional latin mass um and so amongst other things i won't won't go to whole a whole spiel <laughs> here uh but certainly i think bringing um uh, bring that beauty to people in a culture that uh, even if it's just as simple as something on a, on a beer bottle right yeah. uh, that you can give to friends i mean we give it to pl plenty of neighbors and Protestant friends and coworkers, and mm -hmm. you know who may not be exposed to that that level of beauty. And I'm not saying the beer bottle labels the be all end all of you know being exposed to beauty, but just something out of the ordinary that they, they wouldn't expect. And it just is as a way to really ask, even as a, a conversation starter. I mean, because yeah. usually you might not be able to start a conversation about you know who's this saint, you know what what's the mass about you know I mean things things like that. It's you know when you give something to someone like the beer, then it just it's an avenue to talk about those things, um, especially because everyone, let's face it, everyone loves a good, a good beer. Most people oh, yeah. love a good beer. So, you know, when you give them something like that, I think it really opens people up to, you know, a conversation on that um, into the, you know, talking about the beauty of those saints or the church. Uh, no doubt. Without a doubt there, that those, are, those are fantastic points. I wanted to ask you, somebody told me, um, having moderator and she, she will probably be tuning in when I'm airing live. Um, her name is Hallie, incredible moderator, by the way. Thank you, Hallie, for everything you do. Hallie told me that your brewery has been blessed. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Wow. Uh, Can you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And shout out, shout out to Haley. Uh, she's fantastic. She's got some of the brews too. I sent some. Oh, you know her. Wow. I know her. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, she, she's an incredible woman. Um, so yeah, about the blessing. So we, we had uh, some priests, actually, there's a priest from the uh, Institute of Christ the King came down from uh, Chicago. So uh, he came down from Chicago and blessed the brewery 
couple months ago. Um, so there is in the official, uh, the Roman ritual, which is the church's yep. official prayer book for, for blessings. Uh, there is a blessing for beer. And I'm sure you know that, William. With I know that. that you've, <laughs> you've done. Uh, there is a blessing for beer. Yep. Uh, there's not, there's not a formal, formal blessing for breweries per se, but right. there's a blessing for places, of course. And so uh, the priest came down, he blessed the beer that we had in the fermenters. He blessed the brewery itself. Uh, so we were very, very honored uh, to have have them come down again. Actually, that was the second time that they blessed the brewery because we've since moved our brewery. I, I originally had in my basement, we built right. it out and it moved to my father's basement uh, actually about six months ago. So we got it blessed again. Um, so yeah, hopefully that uh, that helps us to bring uh, more, you know, enables us to better, you know, honor God through what we're doing uh, with the additional graces uh, that we're able to receive through that. No doubt, uh, without a doubt. And by the way, uh, by the time people are tuning in, I will have linked up your Twitter down here and your webpage. Do you have a Facebook? I do not. You do not. Okay. Goal, I want to get get on there, but yes, uh, Instagram and Twitter okay, Instagram. My bad. Okay. Yeah. And Twitter as well. Okay, people can follow you there. Are they able to follow? Um, they can. Well, on the webpage, they can look at all the flagship beers there. And they can um, they can be jealous that I just had an incredible one here as well. Uh, but you know, one thing that I did when working on my um, little book on on alcohol um, was I I did a deep dive into the early church fathers. Like, look, if you're Catholic, you love the early church fathers, you love the early church councils. Um, a number of figures that really stuck out to me: Clement of Alexandria, writing in the late 100s or early 200s. Uh, he tells us in the Instructor. It has therefore been well said, a joy of the soul and heart was wine created from the beginning, when drunk in moderate sufficiency. The great golden mouth one, St. John Chrysostomos, tells us, for wine was given us of God that we might be drunken, but that we might be sober, that we might be, not that we might be drunken, but that we might be sober that we might be glad. One of the incredible thing I have found every time I've looked uh, in the early church fathers is that same theme over and over that having alcohol in moderation is okay. Now, again, as you know, the majority of the time they talk about wine, but of course we get to a time period where they also talk about alcohol in general. Strong drink being the equivalent of beer many times. Now, why do I bring that up? I have to ask you, the fact that your incredible brewery has got the great uh, Archbishop, Venerable Archbishop Sheen, uh, other figures as well. Do you have any church fathers that you in particular, or you, maybe your father or anybody that they love, or any saint in particular, this not to be a church father, anyone that um, really does stick out to you all and you all said, you know what, this is an incredible figure and um, we'd like to ask for their intercession as we go about with our brewery and brewing. Yeah, William. So I would say, first of all, uh, that I can recall, we do not have a church father yet. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to add a church father <laughs> onto the list. Um, so yes, that, that is a, a, a must. However, uh, you know, there are much more recent saint, I will say, uh, is that I personally have a, a great devotion. Well, he's not a saint yet, but I think like Full, uh, Venerable Fulton Sheen is on his way there, uh, yep. and that is uh, Blessed Emperor Carl of Austria. Yep. And so he's not, not a church father, but uh, we have a tremendous devotion to him. Uh, my family, uh, in, for example, very similar to my eldest son being named Fulton. Uh, my uh, youngest son, uh, his middle name is Carl after uh, the emperor. Wow. And, uh, my youngest daughter's first name is Zita after the empress, uh, who's also a servant of God right now. She also has her own cause for canonization. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another uh, saint that we are, are in the process of uh, being canonized, I should say, that yeah. we're very uh, devoted to. But we do need to get some church fathers on the beer labels. I will, I will agree to that, William. I got to tell you, if you get even just one, people will go crazy. Yeah. Now, are there any that you particularly like, maybe? Oh, yeah. So I would, I would probably say we'd probably do something for St. Augustine, who yeah. I think is a patron of, of brewers as well. You're correct. Uh, <laughs> and uh, 
yeah, I would probably say, even though he's not, well, he's not a church father, I do want to do something for St. Thomas Aquinas, but you right. know, I, yeah, he's a doctor of the church, not church father. Oh, but yeah. St. Saint Augustine is one that uh, really sticks out to me uh, that I personally want to have a beer for. That uh, That is an incredible idea indeed. Um, uh, incredible. You, you, you named two amazing doctors of the church. You're the great Augustine, who's a church father and doctor, and the great St. Thomas Aquinas, who... Um, uh, you know, I think we can call him a medieval father, Thomas Aquinas. I know uh, I'm not equating him with a church father, a medieval father. I know he's not an early church father, but indeed, uh, two incredible figures. And um, let me ask you this. This has been, an, by the way, I want to put another plug in. This has been an incredible beer. Um, the other thing I'd like to ask you is in terms of beer projects or, you know, maybe opening up a shop in the future or even opening up your place for visitors. Is that something possible that you view as maybe perhaps happening in the future? Yeah, William. So I think, uh, well, first of all, we've got a couple things going. Uh, the first of which is we, we always, I always get asked from many different people, you know, where, where can I find even if you can't sell me the beer, can I at least get something with the labels? I love the artwork. Where, yep. where can I get this stuff? Um, and so I've, I've given a lot away, but I you know, can't keep on buying it for the whole world. So yep. we're going to open up an online uh, store hopefully Wonderful. by this late summer that will be available. Uh, so just so people can have that uh, available because there's been so much demand uh, for it. So we want to make that available to people people want to do that. So we'll have more on our, our website, tridentinebrewing.com or on our social media pages on Instagram or Twitter. We'll put that out there when the time, when the time comes, but in regards to the brewing. So, uh, yeah, we are, we're looking at a few different things right now for how can we get this commercial? Probably the easiest path is to do, uh, co-brewing with an already existing brewery. Um, yeah. and that's where we could go to that brewery that has a license to say when their equipment is, maybe they have some downtime and say, Hey, could we brew on your equipment or maybe we could brew with you and sell it under their license, but it'd have yeah. our branding on it. And so that's something that we're, we're looking into right now. Uh, but also of course, standing up our, our own brewery itself our own brew house uh because right now what we've got is uh it's pretty incredible home brewery uh, set up i will say that yeah. to be prideful but you know when you see it it's like wow that's that's awesome but we're only able to generate 15 gallon batches out of our current equipment which sounds like a lot if someone said oh i can have 15 gallons of beer but that's about 150 bottles and it takes it takes roughly about 20 20 hours of effort from start to yep. finish to put together the batch so it doesn't really make sense at that volume to pay for all these licenses uh it, so in any case we're we are considering you know what does that next step look like to build something out ourselves but probably a more realistic uh, thing that we could do is uh, work with a few brewers that we already know that have their own commercial breweries yeah. to get something out there. And so I think that that's most likely what's going to happen. But in regards to visitors, I think that, yeah, once we have our own established place, if that ever comes to pass, I think at that time we probably have you know, appointments or something where someone could come down and, you know, take a look at the brewery or, or whatever. So that definitely could be uh, in the cards if we have our own brewery that's opened up. That really is incredible. And I have to, to emphasize, you should also uh, uh, think about putting t-shirts out there. <laughs> the reason being, I have to say, the labels, everything is really, incredible. as you said, incredible artwork. And let me, let me emphasize for the audience, at times people reach out to me and tell me, William, I love the artwork that you put for your debates, for your shows. I do none of it. I don't know how to do that. Thank the good Lord I have people that help me out. And I will tell you, it is tough. You've got to know how to design. You've got to know how to use Photoshop. I don't know what else. Um, I can't do it. I don't have the time. A lot of people that do know how to do it have an incredible talent. I'll tell you this. It is not easy to come up with an incredible label like that. Incredible logo. Everything you all have put together, I have to say, uh, brother, is, is incredible. I would like to, before we wrap up the show, and by the way, for people wondering, uh, this is airing, you're watching it here on my channel, Patristic Pillars, I will also bring him to another channel that I run, we'll be talking again next week, God willing, sometime, but I'd like to give you some time, brother, before we wrap up, 
to put in the plug for anything, you want to direct people to a web page, anything in particular, anything you have on your mind, uh, the floor is yours right now, brother. Sure. So, um, yeah, well, first of all, well, a couple things. So a lot of our, our artwork, so you mentioned the graphic design yeah. um, work. So, uh, yeah, if anyone's ever interested in the graphic design work, you know, re reach out to us on our website, our contact form. Um, you know, if you are interested in having my brother Cameron uh, do anything, any of yeah. your artwork. Uh, also, a lot of our labels as well. My brother Cameron uh, puts everything everything together. However, some of the labels they actually have artwork from other artists. So mm -hmm. I like to give a shout out to, um, yeah. so for example, uh, this is one that we've got in the fermenters right now. Uh, I'm sorry if you can see it right there. It's our oh, Stella Mal Maris Baltic Porter. So that's from uh, Chris Lewis over at Barry Tooth Catholic. So he runs an excellent- Oh uh, yeah, I know him. Oh yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah, so we, we've worked with Chris on, on several of our, our labels. Uh, so shout out to Chris. Uh, he's been great to work with. Uh, and so we've also got it as well, uh, Tracy, Tracy L. Christensen at Portraits of Saints. Um, and so this is our uh, St. Bridget oh, of Ireland, yeah. uh, Lake of Beer label. And so uh, we've used some of Tracy's artwork as well. So yeah, to me, it's been fantastic working with others as well in regards to, you know, showcasing their artwork. Not that they, they don't do a great job of showcasing it themselves, but, you know, I'm very honored to have their their artwork on, on our labels. Uh, other things I would say as well, uh, so besides from just, uh, as you mentioned, William, uh, the swag shop or the merch shop or whatever, which yep. hopefully we'll have t-shirts in there as well, like you said, uh, that's something we're, we're looking into, but, uh, Besides from your book, William, um, that I think people should go out and get to read about alcohol and what the church fathers say about it. Uh, another book as well that I found useful was called uh, The Beer Option. Oh, sorry. Wow. Uh, so this one is from uh, Dr. Jared Stout. And so I found this one to be really useful as well. What uh, an incredible last name there. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so great, great last name. I think he, he talks about that in the book, uh, you know, how related to the, the beer. Incredible. So, yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, those are the things that I, uh, I guess I, I have to plug right now, uh, William. I wish I could tell everyone, hey, the, the beer is out there. This is where you could order it. Uh, you know, God willing, in the future, if we're able to, you know, to do something commercial, I think that, again, it would be available for local distribution in Illinois. Yeah. Um, possibly, possibly, uh, if we did things or were able to get it to this point where we could ship it um, in the United States. Yep. The, the brewing laws are very um, mm. archaic. Uh, very, uh, very. Shipping. Uh, so yep. even if we could ship it, not all states, there's about 20 states that you can't ship alcohol to. Yep. So uh, I always have to temper everyone's expectations because they reach out to me and they say, hey, when am I going to see it in my uh, my local grocery store in Washington State or in Pennsylvania? And I'm, I have to say, well, <laughs> even, yep. if we went, even if we went uh, and got our commercial license, we may or may not be able to get it to everyone. And yet another reason why I'd like to plug this idea, this you know Catholic brewery idea, for others out there that yeah. have a if you have a similar passion, you know, go for it because I don't I don't know that Trident could ever be a, you know let's just say a Budweiser national brand or something like that to get it to everyone. So you know if you're listening to this and you're a brewer and you always had you know you're a, you're a strong Catholic in your faith and you wanted to do something. This could be a, a good example for you. And so I would say, as long as you don't call it Tridentine Brewing, uh, go ahead and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and take it and run with it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what I've got, William. Uh, and I've got to tell you that it doesn't have to become like a Budweiser. As long as God willing, uh, you continue, you continue growing in, in a healthy fashion. And uh, I will be praying for you. And I hope that, um, I actually, I know my whole audience will be tuning in. Um, I will ask them to pray for you as well. Pray for your incredible endeavors. Pray for your incredible brewery. And I have to tell you again, uh, that was an incredible beer that I just had. A, a great beer. And for the people that may be wondering, I just got done with an incredible workout session at the gym. This was an incredible beer. I am done with it. I am done with it. Uh, 10 out of 10. Your brewery is magnificent, brother. I am incredibly blessed by your presence Thank you very much for your time. 
And I look forward to talking to you again. And I look forward to having a great friendship with you throughout the years. Thank you very much for your time. I am greatly blessed by your presence. Thank you. I really appreciate you for having me on today. Thank you.